What's up guys, Parrot here, this time with an impromptu video, so we'll see how that goes. Me not having a script, gun has been cleared. I'll put stuff down below so you can skip ahead if I'm talking too much, but I'm gonna try to be as smooth as I can. So either way, I wanted to show off and talk about the handguard I've designed for the Desert Tech MDRX and now Wolverine. I believe they're still taking the same handguards, so I think this will be forward compatible if you have a Wolverine handguard or whatever. I'm not selling these or anything like that, just kind of looking for some feedback. That is a piece of the feedback. Once I've described all the, all the bits and pieces of it, what level of value does this hold for you? Is this a, I would only buy it if it came stock from Desert Tech? Is this a, I would buy it if you printed it for me? Is this a, I would print it myself if you sold a file? Or a, I would print it myself if it were free or a absolutely not don't like the design don't like the concept don't like 3d printed stuff whatever what level of interest would you have if this was actually more professionally done than what I'm doing here I just want to take you through the design concepts I'm still trying to find some way to get a job with Desert Tech I think they're awesome I don't really have the credentials but that's why I'm trying to practice stuff like this maybe go back to school for mechanical engineering or something see if we can make it work so either way this is where we started out this is the stock Desert Tech handguard and it's fine, there's nothing really wrong with it, but I guess one of the pieces I, I kind of wanted to get across is why is a handguard so important in the first place? And that's that, honestly, everything you do with a semi-auto is driven with your left hand, really. I can snap to targets or whatever, I can hold this up all day long left-handed. As soon as I go right-handed, most of the rifle is now forward of my right hand, out of control. And in a bullpup, it's much better weighted, but your left hand is really where you're doing all the driving from. It is the steering wheel of the rifle, and so having one that's comfortable and works for you is very important. Additionally, on a bullpup, where we have a barrel starting back here, here, so much more of the barrel is covered. So with those two factors in mind, um, with the drivability, this is just personal taste. I don't really like this um, sling loop they put on the bottom. I think it also serves as a handguard to prevent your hands from going too far forward in front of the muzzle, but it's just not to my taste. I think that's more stylistic than it is actually a problem. What's getting into slightly more real on the problem front is the way they relieved the front here actually robs you of some potential pick rail. And again, with the bullpup being a shorter platform, you have less space, so you really need to maximize the space you do have. I think on some level that works for a thumb over center line grip, but you'll see I, I find a way to attain that anyways. And then I also don't really love the windows back here for adjusting your uh, gas port. Since the gas plug is not well painted, it's extremely hard, especially once it's in shadow, to see what you're at and, and how to change it. And then it's no longer the new versions, but they actually relieved out here for the portion of pick rail that's attached to the gas block. So stepping up from here, I actually went to their uh, 20 inch handguard. I alleviated a few of those issues by doing this. So if I, if I line up the bolts where it would mount, you can see we get a little bit more length out of it. We also get a lot more pick rail. So if we go pick rail to pick rail, you can see how many additional slots you get by going up. There's no real advantage on the window ports. You do get rid of that sling loop. I like to mount mine on the left-hand side via just a basic QD swivel. That option is open to you. Although you do see in this case, I had to bubba it and cut it up in order to make room for the suppressor to come all the way back. Additionally on this one, since I was already drilling on it, I did relieve in the back. You can see this is drilled out fairly obviously and this was drilled out extremely obviously. But again, I'm trying to get more air back in the rifle to keep it cool, uh, especially while we're doing classes and higher volumes of fire, just for the longevity of it. So what we end up with is my design. And I basically went as simple as possible. Uh, the reason this one's not on the gun is because the, the printing came out super rough. I'm more interested in the design than I am in the 3D printing side. So that's just an unfortunate part of the game. Basically the design is as simple as possible. The smallest diameter tube we can get, um, it's good ways smaller than the original handguard, and it's a lot smaller than the 20 inch handguard. The 20 inch handguard gets extremely girthy. I haven't even thought about this, but yeah, I can literally fit my handguard all the way inside the 20 inch. So by the time I'm running it, like I do on the rifle, where I've got a hand stop so that I can put rearward pressure, and then I've got controls, pads, lights, and lasers and stuff on top, that's actually extended even as small as this diameter is, I'm still not quite able to touch finger and thumb there. Not that that's a metric you need to do, but on this handguard, it gets extremely girthy and uh, you'll really start to wear yourself out. If you think about how the human hand works, right? Palming a basketball is very difficult because your hand is not able to close enough to get in that good strength range of where your muscles work. Where conversely, if you were to try and grip a, say it was a really long needle and you're trying to grip and hold on to that, you're not going to have much grip because again, it's too small. So there is a sweet spot 
where your hand is a certain amount closed and, you, and your muscles are in the strongest part, not the fully stretched or the fully contracted position. This is getting closer to palming a basketball and this is getting closer back to a good range of motion where you can have a fair bit of strength and comfort. Additionally, compared to the original, when we stack end over end, um, what I've done here is I've given you back uh, three slots of pick rail. It's not drastic, but as you can see in practice, and at least with the little wires I'm running, um, it is just enough that we can still mount this pressure switch forward, and I'm still getting a little bit of cooling by having the M-lock slots there. Uh, the thinking, of course, is that Picatinny is a universal standard. That's not going away, but we did put M-lock slots um, at the 3, 6, 9, and 12 position, again, for maximum cooling and airflow. So I'm not actually expecting you to M-lock anything to the top when there's pick rail there, although I did leave um, reliefs on the inside of the rail so that if you did have really long M-lock screws, you could technically just M-lock something to the top of this pick rail, and that would work. So the options there, like I said, here on the top side, there's actually a relief here for your M-lock um, T-nuts. So again, strange as it is, mostly that's just working as, as an easier way for air to flow up and out the top. But uh, technically, if you did have long enough nuts, you could M-lock straight on top of this pick rail. I don't know why you would want to, but that option is there for you. And then similarly on the back, you're able to M-lock into these. I'm not sure what you would M-lock on an angle like that, but the key point is to get air and cooling in the back. And just aesthetically, I found it more pleasing to keep the M-lock flowing. Additionally, there are some weak points. One of the frustrating things with 3D printing is, is trying to get it to stay strong um, despite being printed. What happens, and I think you can see it here a little bit, is you get layer lines. So it's 3D printing one slice at a time from the ground up. And in the direction of the fibers on those, on those parallels, they're very strong. But in between the layers, you don't get what's good it's called layer adhesion and it, it'll split off there so partly to counteract that what i've done is around these screws i've extended the amount of plastic we're using in order to strengthen it you can also see that i'm slightly thicker throughout the handguard than the original is when i weighed them they're within several grams of each other so it's actually not terribly different but i did put a lot of focus into thickening this main circle as well as kind of extending the way the support from the bottom comes in and ensuring that we're getting good contact as good as we can with our measurements anyways with this bottom piece of the receiver so everything is as supported as it can possibly be recognizing that you're going to have different types of torque as you're pulling the rifle and as the rifle is recoiling forward and back as the sling swivel is pulling on it everything here is proven plenty strong so far so no real issues on the durability standpoint I just like that I can get a smaller overall diameter so that I feel I have a very good grip on the rifle and more control and I'm not having my hand opened all the way, which ends up being fatiguing over a, a multi-hour class or over lots of use. On the strength end, I'll try and screen record and take you through a little bit of the design, but I essentially maximize the amount of plastic on the inside around the connection points. So uh, where this pin goes through, where these two bolts go through, and anywhere else that's going to be supporting. You know, you're really only connected at this end and then everything else from this end is just torque. So I try to get as much contact over here as possible so that it's fully supported and there's not room to wobble it around and eventually look, work loose or start to split along layer lines or otherwise weaken the design. Also, when I talked about internal geometries, so all of this piece here, these little ramps here, all of this supporting pieces that'll be connecting into the um, frame of the rifle and the main, main part of the lugs is beefed up as much as possible to ensure that we have as much support as possible. And then kind of the final piece, like I was saying, is both for a mixture of cooling and for just not being able to see when everything is in shadow from this uh, gas adjustment port, I left that top side open. So you get more cooling and it's easier to see what gas setting you're on and easier to adjust that gas setting in the field on the go if needed. Of course, I'm still very beefy around the top. In my world, it's uh, all OSS suppressors. So I made this at just the right dimensions for you to be able to slide the tip of the OSS suppressor in there. And then the widest part will be able to fit right where those bolts are gonna go through. So you actually have to slide the handguard on without the bolts in place, then screw them into their um, kind of T-nut M-lock style recesses and then fit the handguard. So we have this um, 
we have this window that's opened just wide enough to fit the Huxworks uh, flash header through. And so the widest part of it would be fitting right down here in between these lugs here and these walls here. Similar to the original design, like if you are wanting to do quick swap barrels, it's not gonna be possible, but I don't see a lot of people using their MDRX and I assume their Wolverine in a, in a lot of different calibers. Generally people pick one caliber, swap out, and then use it as necessary. So unfortunately this is my office and not a studio. Uh, so the lighting's not great, but it does give you a sense of how much more exposed and easy to get to your gas block is with this handguard. You can see I brought it back just about as far as I could possibly do without abutting because this is still part of the barrel or it's attached to the barrel and so there may be a little bit of wobble and movement in there as it's shooting and as that barrel gets to whipping around like a spaghetti noodle. So I did try to leave some clearance there and, and not really hit immediately on top of it, but it is much more open, much more easy to get to. Like I said, no script here. So I think that's basically it. That That's my design on the MDRX handguard. What do you think? Is it good? Is it an improvement? Was it a waste of time? Yeah, thanks for nerding out with me. I, I like doing this stuff. If you know anybody at Desert Tech, you know, try to get me in there, help me out. I'll go back to school. I'll learn how to do this stuff for real, but passion's there. Now we just need to direct the energy. Thanks for your time. I'm looking forward to your thoughts and have a good one. Okay, and here's the problem with no script. I almost forgot the number one thing I wanted to talk about. The number one drawback of, of this system and you know, potentially why Desert Tech did it differently to begin with, is that, oh no, this pick rail is now on a lower and separate plane than the main pick rail here. And the reason I don't think that's a concern and went forward with the design anyways and really enjoyed how much it shrinks the, shrinks the overall grip up is that as it's currently designed, this handguard does not hold zero. I know there is a new Sabretooth handguard which will hold zero, but this version does not. So as such, I'm not really concerned with having it on the same plane as the main pick rail here. Main pick rail is plenty long enough for you to mount whatever optic you need. So you're never gonna need to mount an optic out this far that holds zero. Some of the potential counterpoints to that would be, oh, uh, clip-on night vision or clip-on thermals. I don't have a lot of experience with that. I think majority of the market is not using those things as they often start at, I don't know, five up to 10 grand. It can be insanely expensive. And from the videos I've watched on them, I understand some of those do actually shift your zero. So if you're gonna be clipping onto something that doesn't hold zero and it's shifting zero on your main optic anyways, I think you're back to the whole point of, of this not holding zero being a deal breaker. So I'm no longer concerned at having this on a lower level than the main pick rail. And I think if for whatever reason you were super concerned about that, you could always add a riser back to this and still have these um, smaller overall diameter uh, for the rest of the rail that you're not using in that way. So again, thanks for watching. So I did just remember one little treat I wanted to include here at the end and uh, one little piece I wanted to feel out for you. I'm looking to commit one of the greatest sends that has ever been committed in the gun space in bullpup and MP5. I might have already done it. There might be more work needed too. I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't want to show too much of the design. Give it away. Uh, would you tune in to watch? Would that be interesting? Would that be funny? Would most people get it? Would you think I'm serious and that I think it's better that way? I'm thinking of doing a kind of a tongue-in-cheek video where I just get all the facts wrong and just talk about how much better it is uh, bullpopped and try to be like, act like I'm serious about it. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Thanks again.